we'll try to make this a uh, interactive session so whenever you have any doubts or anything just unmute your mic and just talk to me i can't uh, see it in the chats so you need to just talk okay um so what do you know about code systems to begin with do you, have you heard about icd10 uh, icd stands for international uh, classification of disease uh, so it could be used by the clinicians patients uh to classify uh, the codes of a particular disease or the diagnose diagnostic names correct yes that is one way to put it yes that's correct icd10 is for classification and it can be used by clinicians okay this is conditions and the like risk factors infections all those are okay. categorized on the on the basis of alphabetical order mm -hmm. so like Uh, so the, this uh, will be like a, like if it is diabetes mellitus it falls under e category is mm. the code which starts with the e we might yeah. think like it will be like diabetes like it endocrine related system right. specific to that maybe i think e11 something i guess Correct. that is a diabetes each system has their own um, alphabetic uh, representation by seeing that only we can under identify it is related to some particular system Okay, okay, I got it. So then the, one more yeah. thing is like confirmed diagnosis only. We have to code. Hmm. We we cannot uh, code for a provisional diagnosis. Means there is no if there is it if it is not confirmed we cannot code mm -hmm. like that. Okay. There is one separate uh, chapter for that like uh, risk factor or uh, that that from that we can code. Okay, okay. correct all that is correct and i think you know a uh, lot about icd and uh, yeah I, you can see that's uh, that's very good so good that's icd 10 and um, now i'll start the talk with how icd and snomad are different okay so first of all icd is one of the most popular coding systems in india and we use it everywhere because it was introduced by insurance agencies to uh first of all give claims and second of all to uh, report death statistics the reason for someone's death if we want they start using icd and from there it permeated uh, into the clinic and uh, everyone even in the hospital sometimes talk in terms of icd codes uh, i've seen psychiatrists talk in terms of m a b like even the codes they know for each disorder what code it is now snomet ct was made for the sole purpose of entering data in the clinic itself during data capture a clinician entering the data that's what its nomad ct was made for icd10 is not such a code so this is uh, what we will be discussing today so first is what is the difference between icd10 and snomad so the first difference is icd10 is a classification okay it classifies things based on what it is Snomad City is an ontology, and we'll see what an ontology is. I'll give you an example. Like, let's say we'll take diabetes. Okay. Now, diabetes here uh, they have classified with with coma, with ketoacidosis, with renal complications. So there is, for example, diabetic nephropathy, diabetic cataract. All these things are there. So now, what is diabetes? If you ask ICD-10, all it knows is that it will tell that diabetes is an endocrine. or nutritional or metabolic disease and the reason for that is very simple because icd doesn't care about diabetes itself it only cares that okay the clinician has put that code in correctly but if you take snomad city and this is the snomad city browser all of you uh, should know about this if you are to uh, explore snomad city i'll put the link uh, later um, so if i search for diabetes diabetes so you can see that there are hundreds of uh, things under diabetes it's just not a diabetes mellitus it's a bronze diabetes latent diabetes diabetic diet diabetes uh, we'll search for diabetes mellitus um let's see this so we can see that diabetes mellitus is here but the thing is under um, snomad city 
Diabetes is actually a type of disorder of glucose metabolism. It is also a type of endocrine disorder of endocrine system. And here you can see that the finding site, they have labeled it as a structure of the endocrine system. And under diabetes, we have these 14 children. There is type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Under type 2 diabetes, again, we have these different things. And inside that, for example, pregnancy and type 2 diabetes mellitus, inside that there are, uh, again, uh, more subtypes. So one thing you need to understand is ICD-10 is a group classification. What they do is they take different groups of codes. For example, all of these under diabetes type 2, diabetes mellitus type 2, they will take and they will code it under one category as uh, non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. And under that they have, you know, or adult onset type 2. But under SNOMED CT, you have much more fine-grained control of what uh, you can represent. So it's it's meant for clinicians to use while entering data. Uh, it's also it can also be used to uh, do statistical analysis. But for that, you will again be using something like ICD-10 because most of the time other people use ICD-10. Okay. So uh, any questions so far as to uh, any questions you can ask me anytime, you can just unmute. So the, the difference is here under diabetes, it's not only a type of endocrine disorder, but it's also a type of disorder of uh, glucose metabolism. And this is because SNOMED CT uh, is a multi-hierarchy system in that the same concept can have multiple parents and uh, the same concept can also have multiple uh, uh, children under it. So whereas in ICD, uh, diabetes can only be a type of endocrine, neuro, nutritional or metabolic disease. It can't be both at the same time. Uh, this will be even more uh, uh, evident in things like uh, infectious diseases, for example. If you take uh, tuberculosis, for example, here they classify uh, respiratory tuberculosis bacteriologically and histologically confirmed. Now, the thing is, a tuberculosis uh, is also, it's not just a respiratory disease, it's also an infectious disease. But in this case, uh, based on this, we cannot identify that. We can only identify that tuberculosis is an infectious disease because it falls under the infectious and parasitic diseases. Whereas in uh, Snowmer City, if you take tuberculosis, tuberculosis, so you can see that it is a type of mycobacteriosis. Again, mycobacterium is the infectious agent and that itself is a type of infection caused by this thing, bacterial, which is a bacterial infection, which is an infectious disease. And here under tuberculosis, if you go, there are many other types of tuberculosis. Like there can be respiratory tuberculosis, there can be tubercular lesion of the lung, tuberculoma, which is probably in the brain. Uh, so here you can see that you can represent a lot more using SNOMED CT than using a classification system like ICD-10. So that is the first difference. The first thing is the fine grain nature of SNOMED. And uh, the second thing is SNOMED can then be uh, mapped to ICD-10. So if you look at uh, something like uh, CTVC, here this particular thing, this particular tuberculoma does not have uh, an ICD map, but it has a CTV3 simple map to this. But e if it does have a map, it will show up under ICD-10 complex map. So tuberculosis, you'll see, it shows up under ICD-10 complex map as A16.9. So the thing is, uh, you asking clinicians to record data by ICD-10 doesn't make any sense because they can't think in terms of classifications. They think in terms of what a concept is. And they cannot remember numbers while dealing with a patient. Uh, that's what SNOMED CT is made for. Now, all of these things, they do not have a number that you can even remember. In fact, the code for tuberculosis is uh, 56717001. And uh, nobody expects you to remember this, right? So e even these things, nobody needs to remember the number. You just uh, input it based on a simple search mechanism. So that is the main use of SNOMED CT. You use this to get data from clinicians at the point of data entry. 
Now, once you get this data, once you have structured data, there are a lot of things that you can do because uh, of how SNOMED CT is laid out. So, for example, uh, you are responsible to make an EMR, uh, an electronic health record, and uh, you take SNOMED CT as the code system of choice. And you realize that uh, all the doctors are not choosing the same thing even for tuberculosis because there are multiple types of tuberculosis, right? There is active tuberculosis, there are chronic tuberculosis. So you see that uh, all doctors are choosing very specific things. Now, what you, you want at the end of the day to find out how many patients came to the hospital with tuberculosis. Uh, is that something you can do? Yeah, that's something that, or that is what SNOMED CT was made for. And that's why they have this other section called expression constraint queries. So I'll just show you a simple query. Uh, so what you can do is you can ask SNOMED CT, uh, the, this terminology service, to give me all the types of tuberculosis there are in the system. So for example, this is asking SNOMED CT all the types of clinical findings. So I'll just execute this and show you. Uh, so you, we are getting a lot of findings, and before this, we'll we'll just uh, this is clinical finding because SNOMED CT is not only for clinical find, uh, findings. Uh, if you look at the taxonomy, you can see that there is body structures, there is clinical findings, there is events, there is observable entities, there are organisms. So you can use SNOMED CT for all of this. You can use it to pick drugs from a drug list. In fact, India, uh, the NRCS, which is responsible for standards has made a drug list using SNOMED CT. So uh, you can search for, uh, you know, drugs here. You can search for other uh, things like, uh, you know, the specimen, what specimen is it? Uh, is it a, b a blood specimen, saliva, bone, all that. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, at hierarchies here and I recommend you go check it all out and I'm not going to go into all that. But um, the basic thing is you can also query it in a very complex way. If once you have given your doctors the freedom to choose the term however they like, you can then do queries like, okay, let's do a type of all types of tuberculosis type. So tuberculosis, we get the code, and this thing basically means give me all the descendants of all the types. So if we execute, and we see there are 257 concepts, okay, and if you see that there is a tuberculosis in mother complicating childbirth, even that is a super specific term that uh, has been brought up by this small query. Okay, so this is called uh, ECL or expression constraint language, and that is what uh, SNOMED City supports, and uh, you can see more examples of that here. You can uh, have all types of something, you can have a uh, all descendants or self, which will also include tuberculosis. Uh, you can have all the ancestors, all the parents of tuberculosis. So let's just see what the parents of tuberculosis are. I'm pretty sure we'll get like, see mycobacteriosis, bacterial infection, clinical finding, all the way up to the SNOMED CT root concept. So that is the root concept. So um, that is SNOMED CT. And uh, well, the thing is, it's a very deep subject. And this is just scratching the surface of uh, what SNOMED CT is and what it can do. I'll show you a little bit more complicated examples. Okay, like for example, you can even search by this. So I told you that each uh, terminology is also associated with attributes here, right? So for example, uh, the previous query in which we saw tuberculosis in the mother or complicating childbirth and all that, you can see that here it has a lot of uh, attributes like pathological process, it's an infectious process, causative agent, it's caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So you can do other things as well, like for example, uh, this query uh, asks, give me all the disorders of the lung that are associated with edema. Okay, so I'm going to execute that and see. So here you get all the types of lung diseases which have edema. So even whatever you want to think in terms of clinically, uh, you can represent it using a SNOMED CT query, right? So if you want to get all the types of uh, infectious diseases that are caused by mycobacterium, you can do that. Uh, so uh, tell me what you would like to query in case, let's say I'll give you a um, very easy scenario. 
So we have a hospital and uh, people are collecting data using Snowmed CT. Uh, you want to somehow filter COVID patients. You want to somehow give an alert to someone if in case someone with COVID comes. What do you do? What do you, you know, what is the basic thing that you should look for first? Anyone? Temperature. Yeah. Temperature of the patient. Temperature, correct. Yes. Body temperature. Yes, body temperature. Yeah. Excellent. Then? Uh, the symptoms, uh, like the body temperature, then the symptoms like cold cough. Cold and cough. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, so we'll see for body temperature first. First, uh, we'll see, for example, fever, right? Like fever is something that people may uh, put inside their uh, Snowman CT thing. They'll just enter it as fever. But sometimes they may not enter it as fever. In fact, they will enter it as something else, which is, for example, there is hyperpyrexia, there is, uh, there is, the doctors can do all sorts of stuff. They can enter it as uh, as very specific type of fever, for example, cough with fever. Now, what you want to do is you want to query all the types of fever. So if you query all the types of fever, no matter what the doctor enters in their system, for example, post procedure, all these types of fever you will get and you can create an alert system to automatically alert someone in case uh, they have increased body temperature and fever. So that's something that's very trivial to do in this case. So that is uh, how you know you can use Snowmed City practically in your uh, systems. Now, sometimes in Snowmed City, there is a, a the concept is not present. Okay, so even that, you know, even for that, they have a very good method to extend Snowmed City. So what you can do. Uh, is you can write your own extension uh, by means of making your own files and then add it to Snowmed City in your own extension and then those concepts will again show up. So for all that, you can uh, look at the Snowmed City's website and uh, uh, they have a good foundation course that's free. If you are really interested in that, take the foundation course. And uh, another thing that Snowmed City introduces is the concept of post coordination. Okay. So I'll just search for uh, Snowmed CT post coordinate. Okay, so these are Snowmed CT expressions, right? So sometimes uh, the concept that that we want is not present in this hierarchy. Okay, so can you think of some really complicated concept that you think won't show up here? Uh, if you are, if you can, then let me know. I'll tell you how we can represent that with a Snowmed CT expression. Um, so, like you saw here uh, in the uh, in the expression constraint language, the same way you can, in fact, represent uh, something in Snowmed CT using uh, this. So, this is a query. So, since we are asking, give me all the types of. But instead, if you sometimes, if you want the doctor to choose something and refine it themselves. For example, you have a clinical finding and let the doctor just say that the finding site is a pulmonary valve structure, you can also do that. So this is a valid uh, Snowmed City concept and the, you need not only enter numbers just like that, but you can also enter big queries like this and a Snowmed City capable system, uh, for this we need something called description logic and that will be, it's a little complicated, but uh, you can take a look at all this description logic, semantic web, owl ontology, and all of that. So a system will be able to uh, read this and then figure out what kind of thing it is, and it will still show up in the search, even if it's not part of Snowmed CT here. So this is called a post-coordinated Snowmed CT expression. Not a lot of people use it, but that's something that you can do. And uh, in fact, they have something called the MRCM, which is the machine readable concept model. And for each uh, concept, for example, uh, a clinical finding can have all of these attributes. A clinical finding you can be, uh, can happen after something, can happen before something, 
So let's say you want to represent something like um, appendicitis after the patient had a procedure. Okay, like you want to represent that concept. You need not make a new Sonomet City concept and get the approval of Sonomet City International and all that. You can just go ahead and easily just uh, since it's a clinical finding, it's a, by the uh, statement that I showed you, you can easily just add the clinical finding after whatever. So here you just search for that and you click on that and that's it. You have created a post coordinated expression. So these are things to keep in mind when you are creating a SOMAT CT enabled system. Post coordination is a rather uh, complex topic and you can uh, explore that at your own leisure. But uh, querying is very important because uh, when we uh, record things using this code system, it will be a waste not to utilize these queries that are available. And uh, you need not even make this into your own system. You can use something like the Snowmet CT browser and learn about uh, these kind of queries. And uh, you can just get all the types of uh, uh, codes and then filter your EHR based on that. So that will be a good uh, use case of Snowmet. Uh, so up next, what do we have? ECL, I covered, post coordination, okay. Inference engine is the description logic that I talked about. In fact, every Nomad city, for example, let's take Catra. Uh, if you look at the diagram, they have all these things like uh, the cataract is a type of uh, disorder of lens. It's a degenerative disorder of eye. It's a cataract finding. Uh, and it has these attributes. It has an associated morphology of abnormally opaque structure. It has a finding site of lens of the eye. So you can, uh, this is represented as a, a class axiom definition. So this is a computable class axiom that uh, uh, you can compute using things like OWL, ontology web language. Uh, it's not very popular, it's not very well known, but it's something that you can do if you're interested in programming your own SNOMED CT inference engine. So you can just uh, uh, take all of this and make your own system to do these kind of inferences. So that is about it. Like if, if there is a concept and the concept has parents, the concept has children and the concept has attributes. So these attributes are basically what, uh, where is what, what is what. So that is SNOMED CT uh, in a nutshell. Any questions that you have about uh, SNOMED CT, how you can use it, what is it for, and uh, anything? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Okay, okay, good. Uh, so you, you need to, Explore this in your own pace, in your in in further detail. And uh, the Snowmet CT documentation is a really good place to get started. They also have a foundation course, which is free of cost. You can also take that, and they have a lot of videos explaining what Snowmet CT is, how you can use it. Uh, but uh, if you just know that it's a code system meant for doctors and clinicians, and it's much more detailed. Uh, and you can do these sort of fancy queries on it. I think that should be enough uh, to begin with. Um, and uh, yeah, that's no bad CT. Uh, now let's go to Loink. So how many of you have heard of Loink before? Have you used it somewhere? Any experience with Loink? Like practically we don't have like idea. The class is done on that. Okay, okay. What what did you learn in your classes? It's related to like uh, laboratory terminology. Okay. Diagnosis, all this. Correct. Okay. And uh, anything else that you know about Lang? How to get the like on the basis of if like on the basis of the disease or the, some we can uh, get the course or uh, like if we have it is not that exact number like code we should know anything can on the basis of that we can search the code okay okay 
correct. Uh, that's about right. So loink is used for anything where you can ask a question. If you can ask a question, there is probably a loink code for that. Um, so the thing is, Nomad CT also uh, has a thing for it, and it's called observable entity. So you have something called as observable entity, and uh, under this you have uh, many, uh, for example, assessment scores. Uh, for example, this is an assessment score for uh, Brimham object recognition battery score. We have this under Snowmed City also. Uh, but Loink provides a more comprehensive uh, you know, uh, framework for this. Uh, the most common thing is it's not just for um, laboratory values. It's mostly used there, but it's also used for things that you can measure in the clinical space. Like if you take blood pressure or pulse, you can still represent that using Loink codes. Uh, so here, this is what is Loink. And uh, th there are multiple paths to, the, I think this is a, a message, uh, HL7. And here, they tell you how the Loink code should be inserted. And now in Fire, they use the code system, obviously. Um, so Loink term basics, I think you must have already uh, seen about this in theory, they have multiple parts. You have the component, the property, when it was uh, analyzed, what type of specimen it was used, uh, what is the scale that was used, and the method. So most all of these, uh, except the method, are mandatory. So method is the only part that is uh, optional here. So uh, let's take an example. So here uh, they say for uh, the leukocyte blood count. So what it is, a leukocyte manual count of white blood cells in cerebral fluid uh, specimen. So this thing representing based on all these six uh, axes or uh, parts, we can say that the component what you are analyzing is the leukocyte and the property is the number of concentration of that and you are doing it point in time. Most of it is going to be point in time, nothing except a very few that are going to be over a duration of a day. Like for example, urinary output uh, in 24 hours, that's going to be done over a duration. Everything else is point in time. And uh, the specimen is the CSF. And the scale is the quantity. So quantity means how many are there, how many white blood cells are there. And method is manual count. Right. So, and based on that, they have three different names. They have the fully specified name, which is the, the blah, 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 manual count, the long common name, the leukocyte number per volume in cerebral spinal fluid, and the short name, WBC member CSF manual. Uh, so that's the short name. So again, we'll come to scope of LOINC. It, it's basically for both laboratory and clinical, as we'll see. And uh, right now they are expanding their uh, whole scope uh, the, the thing is, you won't be using loin codes in isolation. You will mostly be using loin codes or, as part of a panel. So this is a practical tip. Uh, I'll just show you how you would go about uh, doing uh, searching for loin codes, for example. So let's just take blood pressure, for example. Uh, I'm just searching blood pressure loin. Okay, and. You will get here systolic blood pressure, right? Suppose you get this. So you shouldn't just take the systolic blood pressure and start measuring all of your findings as uh, a systolic blood pressure. You should instead see what it is uh, a part of, like the member of the panel. So once you find the member of the panel, blood pressure panel, you click on that because most of the times, even active loin codes are not uh, that commonly used. There are only a few loin codes that are commonly used and they're always part of a panel. So if they are part of a panel, you can go ahead to the blood pressure panel and see what are all the other things that they use. For example, the systolic blood pressure, the diastolic blood pressure, mean uh, blood pressure method, blood pressure cuff size, all of this they have automatically you know, put under a panel. So panels are very important and in fact uh, there is even uh, yeah, okay, I need to log in, I think. So, loink panels, there is the uh, panel. So, they have loink panel browser. So, they have for laboratory orders, they have 150, uh, I mean, 1,563 panels and like that. They have panels for everything. Uh, so, let's just look at one laboratory orders panel. 
to give you an idea i will just go to uh urine analysis okay so these are all different panels so let's just go to the urinary analysis dipstick panel so under the dipstick panel you have uh, another panel and under that you have all of these codes so uh, the main takeaway should be do not use lawing codes from randomly acquired codes use it which is always part of a panel and uh, one more thing is usually people like open ehr they have already uh, they have uh, a mapping to loink uh, and you can take a look at their systems and then map to which code that you want to use in loink and uh, again mapping to loink doesn't mean that you don't have your own local codes in the hospital so in your hospital you always need to have local codes for administrative purposes uh, and uh, you map that to loink using relma there is a tool here called relma but uh, you need not really use that you can always just do it manually in whatever way uh, that you find suitable so i'll show you one more thing in fact uh, loink and snomed recently got into an agreement and uh, they came up with the this uh, the snomed ct loink cooperative package right so here what they do is uh, i told you about snomed ct expressions right so they look something like this so here what they are doing is they are mapping a loink code into a snomed ct expression this is an observable entity which inherits blood direct site blood specimen time aspect single point in time component calcium electrolyte uh, scale uh, this this is you can see that all parts of uh, loink that we just talked about all of these uh, parts can easily be mapped as nomad ct attributes under the observable entity so here under the observable entity uh you have component direct site has realization inherits and in fact loink only has six snomed has uh, about 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 more than uh, 15 such attribute so this is much more detailed but loink is used more commonly in uh, many circles so that's why they came out with this uh, mapping so that even if somebody uses a loink code you can still map it as a snomed uh, ct expression and from that you can do uh, things like the snomed ct query so if you want to know all the specimens that use blood as the specimen you can go ahead and do that so that is uh, you know the loink and how it fits together with snomed ct uh, now i would like to know uh, about your use case since it's uh, just you three you tell me how what you will be doing in the next few years and uh, how you are going to be using snowmed city and loink then i think i'll answer questions as you ask them and uh, we'll go from there so how what do you want to know more about how do you see yourself using this uh, then i'd like to help you more uh, in detail uh, yeah hi sir this is milan Yeah. Uh, actually i want to know how this how this lines and on snowmat city we can uh, put it in it concept so that uh, i mean the health it concept are you asking how to implement this in your own system was that the question yes yes exactly yeah okay. yeah so um i'll i'll show you a demo implementation of uh, you know snowmat city in fact i was just been working on this in the morning um Okay. You can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, so I the first thing you need is a terminology service. Okay, uh, there are many terminology services out there for Snomed. Uh, you can use Snowstorm. You can use Hermes. That's the one I'm using in this one. Uh, so 
what I am going to do is I'm going to show you a small example of something that I built. So here, this is just a very random thing. Like here in this case, uh, I just changed whatever I already made. But this one can take in a SNOMED CT uh, code set. So what you want to do is when, uh, this is actually the Glasgow Coma Scale. So you want to choose, uh, you know, whatever you have. And here you have the data being generated. In fact, this is in the open EHR format. Uh, but here, this is where uh, there is a SNOMED CT. So here, people can choose based on SNOMED CT. So let's say you want only problems, right? Like the patient comes with you with headache. So, so you can choose headache. And here you can see that it chose headache, but uh, under uh, the terminology, here you can see best, it's SNOMED CT, headache, and the code is automatically put. And in fact, if we go to the SNOMED CT browser and search for this code, so under international version, if we search for this, we have the thing headache, okay. And its finding site is head structure. So you, you, once you record this like that, you can ask questions like how many people came to me with pain in the head? Or even you can even render a nice UI with pain in the head. Like you can put a red color area in a body of a human being and make it that based on the fact that you know that the finding site is head structure. So, so that, this is one implementation. You can just you just ask them to search, and it, it they need not search headache exactly. They can even search pain in pain in head, and that also maps to headache. It's the same thing. Like we can we have multiple synonyms for the same uh, term. Some. One might even search cephalodynia, for example, and let's just see if that works. Cephalo, I think I spelled it wrong. I mean, nobody in their right mind would search cephalodynia, but uh, in case they do, cephalodynia. Yeah, cephalodynia is again still headache. So this is one way that you can um, uh, use it in a system. You have a terminology service. And uh, you can watch my videos, actually. I'll make a few on this, especially how to implement SNOMED CT, how to uh, put it in your own system and all that. And the way you download SNOMED CT is you, for Indians at least, uh, you need to go to MLDS. So this is the website that is uh, hosted by SNOMED CT and India uh, cooperatively. And this is under the National Release Center. And here I already have my application approved. So you need to first sign up and get your application approved. And after you get your, and I have an educational license because uh, you can also get an educational license in a matter of two, three days. Then here you have uh, packages. So see, this is the India COVID-19 extension for Snowmed City. Here you can see the common drug codes for India, uh, the India patient instruction language extension. So you have so many things that are given by uh, uh, the National Release Center for India, but you can just download uh, this. So you just look at this, there is a zip file here, and you can you just download that. And this is the release notes. It says what it does and all that. Uh, so that's how you just agree to their license and you download that. And uh, inside how the file is uh, laid out, uh, how you can, I'll just extract this and show you. Okay, modified today. Phenomic city. So here you have three different files. So one is the delta, the full, and the snapshot. Okay, so uh, the snapshot is this point in time, uh, give me all the concepts that this extension has. And the thing is, this is an extension. Uh, it's not a full uh, terminology. For that, you need to download uh, the Sonomad City International Edition. So Sonomad City International Edition, you need to have for all these extensions to work. So first you download that, then on top of that, we'll just see in the COVID edition what all they released. Okay, so we have a lot of files here. So the main files you need to be worried about is the concept file, which tells what are the new concepts that they released. You see that they have released these concepts. There is, uh, the name of the concept is not here. It's under another file called description. So under uh, this file, you can see there are, uh, some new codes that they released. 
they released severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 negative 2019 covid negative novel coronavirus negative all these new terms they released isolation at home because of infection so the thing is uh, you have an EHR uh, and you need to update the SNOMED CT with all these new codes if you are to do these sort of analytics. If you want to find out uh, how many people are at home right now, you can't do that without having uh, everyone use the same codes at, at least across a hospital, right? So that's why uh, NRCS re released all this recovered from COVID-19. See, these recovered from COVID-19, recovered from SARS-CoV-2, I'm pretty sure all of them belong to the same concept. These are just multiple words, but in the uh, here you can see under concept ID which concept they are related to. So they have ID, effective, time, active, module, ID, and concept ID. And under concept ID is what will tell you uh, which concept uh, it belongs to. Okay, uh, so for all this, you need to look at the SNOMED CT website and uh, do a, it in, in a little bit more detail. If you also want, I can. Uh, maybe teach you if you're interested, but I think as of now you're just getting started. So uh, this is the basic gist of what it is. And again, in the relationships file, we have all the different types of relationship. So here there is a source ID and a destination ID. So that's basically, it's telling, uh, it's, it's like a map. So basically uh, there are multiple types of concepts. So one of the concept is ISA. ISA means like infectious disease is a type of disease so like th that's how you draw the line so these relationship files are used to draw the line between one concept to another like for example uh, tuberculosis is a type of uh, respiratory disease so those kind of things and also the attributes attributes are also given based on these relationships so that you can see based on the type id um, the type id has multiple things like is a uh, finding site Etc. Etc. So uh, here is the owl ontology. So for this, you need to learn about description logic and how owl works. And uh, based on that, you can just use the this particular this equivalence class blah 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 this big thing. You can just use that and give it to uh, a description logic reasoner. There are many out there. One is uh, GraphDB and uh, Neo4j, these kind of databases work on uh, description logic. Protej is another one. So these things, uh, you can just use this and upload it in those kind of databases and do logical reasoning from this also. So that is, this is just the file that was released by uh, India, or uh, NRCS. So that's how you implement Snowman City. You you download this file, you make a terminology server, or you can download a terminology server from uh, some online repository, and uh, you make the front end where you ask them to type and then bring out a search. Uh, there are other ad concepts too. You can just ask them to put a checkbox tick and then associate that with a, a Snowmed City concept, but the most common one is searching. Um, any other questions? So that uh, um, how we can uh, this this healthcare uh, if you take uh, EMR system in an hospital it is huge uh, it is lot of tools are involved or uh, clubbed together to uh, make it as a one common platform. So as if students uh, what and all they should uh, learn in deeper for their future. So. Now they are starting their career into healthcare, IT as an analyst or some uh, executive. So that for growing further into this, what are the tools or the packages they should learn? By means, whenever I'm interacting, whenever I'm engaging session, I'm a core IT guy, so I'll be teaching about what is MySQL and how the queries has to be written and how to create the database tables. In that context, I'll be teaching then software engineering and object-oriented concepts. Likewise, I am narrowing down yeah, as yeah. data warehousing, etc. But when it comes to this type of health IT standards, yeah. they are you now they are somehow they are decided that they are going to work for this IT standard for mm -hmm. their benefit and how to grow further into their profession. What are the things they should learn for? Okay, okay, got it. Um, 
Okay, so I'll tell you two things that you need to learn in order to be successful in the field. So one thing is definitely uh, HL7 Fire. Okay, so this is a messaging standard that is almost becoming the standard at least for this decade. So you need to learn uh, HL7 Fire. The second thing is OpenEHR. And if you ask me, I would say OpenEHR is even more important than HL7 Fire. Uh, the reason is because healthcare data is not uh, standard. Okay, you cannot, uh, for example, you, you are making a health IT system based on the doctor's needs. Okay, uh, then you put your tables, you write your schema for your database and then you migrate and then you have 100 uh, tables. Uh, let's say for uh, blood pressure, you have systolic, you have diastolic, that's it. Uh, then tomorrow the doctor comes in, the doctor will be like, oh, I need uh, the position in which the patient was uh, taken, this blood pressure was also taken. Then what do you do? You need to change your schema again, make a migration, put your put your new column. And this team's happening, right? This is a very common thing that happens in uh, healthcare, uh, especially health IT, uh, which is the back and forth between... Uh, the health IT professional and the doctor. So this is what OpenEHR was made for. So what they are saying is let the doctors and the health IT experts come up with the, these things called archetypes and templates. And you, you can assemble multiple archetypes and templates into each other and make something. And then this final thing, you give it to the health IT people. And no matter what it is, it should work using uh, this uh, template. So that is what uh, uh, OpenEHR is basically saying. And I even uh, made a short video about this, how OpenEHR works and what to do or not. There are uh, tools available. So first thing I'll say is for uh, HL7 and Fire, uh, learn Happy. Okay. Happy Fire. First learn this. This is a Java library. Okay. And uh, learn about this and you will be very easily employed in a lot of places uh, just by knowing how to uh, write. I think Java is very common in the health IT space. Everyone usually uses Java. Any other languages that you use? Uh, you learned anything else that is uh, more common? Or what, what do you guys uh, mostly program in? About Java and uh, Python. R, Python. Okay, good. What else? Uh, okay, I, I, I would suggest uh, you learn Java because it's uh, very, very common in the health IT space. Java.net, these are the main uh, things that people build uh, health IT systems, at least now they are using that. So at least OpenEHR is trying to change that. So what it is doing is uh, if you take, for example, a blood pressure, right, it's, uh, it's not so simple. In fact, blood pressure has... Uh, these many data types, like inside blood pressure, there is systolic, diastolic, mean arterial, pulse pressure, uh, what was the, were they sleeping or awake, uh, were they exerting themselves, what was the tilt, the position, cuff size, there are so many things to take into consideration. So OpenEHR says, uh, don't worry about all that, just uh, you create your archetypes and templates. And uh, in fact, this is a system that works based on archetypes and templates. I'll uh, show you how this is, uh, what do you say, a, a dream EHR system I would like to be in the future, but it's currently not like that. Uh, so I'll just show you, um, because we still have time. Uh, so how you can take all of this and make something a doctor can use immediately. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to log in with Google. My block, and this has been something that I've been working very recently. Uh, so better if I showed you right now. Okay. So what you ask is you ask a doctor to create the template of health IT professional. Uh, so, so the health uh, person who knows a little bit about both the uh, what the clinical requirement and the a little bit of the technology, especially open HR, uh, they create a template. Okay, now let's say it's just a, a template you want to, when the patient comes, you want to listen to their problems and you want to 
just write down the problems and with the problem you just want to record the blood pressure okay like for some reason so uh, i'm just a problem problem and bp okay i'm just calling it problem and bp okay okay problem and bp so in the under the content now what you do is you add a uh, blood pressure first actually let's record the problem first problem which is a problem diagnosis now if you put it you can automatically see that open ehr already uh, with hundreds of people's uh, collective effort they have made uh, this problem which is like problem or diagnosis name uh, the clinical description body site whatever they have made so many so now uh, this problem diagnosis name what we'll do is we will code it using snomed ct okay so you uh, cannot set your value without terminology okay terminology is snomed ct you are uh, uh your i really doesn't matter no need so let's just keep it like that okay uh now let that be and i don't want anything else the body side and all that we can automatically calculate using the diagnosis most of the time date onset also i don't want all i want is just the fact that what is the problem okay so i'm just even course description we can ask them to write a free text uh, just comment nothing i don't want anything you know said last updated no no i don't okay so the problem or diagnosis uh that is the one thing and the next thing is blood pressure okay so i'm adding blood pressure also so under blood pressure let's just measure systolic and diastolic and uh, you also this they they are asking to measure multiple times we are, we are not going to do that we're just going to measure systolic and diastolic okay nothing else everything else 24 hour average no protocol nothing this is actually can exclude all optional and only include systolic and diastolic okay everything else is cancelled out only this is left so now what i'll do is uh, i can export this as a web template okay this is a template that you give to the system the final uh, ehr system you give this okay and whatever it is it will work with that so now i'm just going to go to i'm going to clear this I'm going to settings and i'm going to add a template in documents called problem and bp and i just added it just like that okay now problem and bp you can see that it it automatically is rendering the uh, systolic and diastolic okay so now here under problem diagnosis it does not render properly because tree does not have inputs input does not have list whatever that's because we need to tell that this is in fact a search okay and if we put it as search please configure terminology url and constraint okay terminology url i have it running under local host 8080 uh sorry search it to slash slash and constraint so constraint is again the uh, query that we want to constrain it to so i told you right uh, we can constrain it as a clinical finding so under the taxonomy we don't want body structures we want uh, only clinical finding okay so the problem cannot be anything but a clinical finding right so we are constrain it to only that okay and now i'm just going to save that and that's it uh, the bp uh, problem and bp problem head okay head just call it one copy not bp and that's it that's how you automatically generate uh, an interface based on uh, uh, just you see this was this just took me 5 minutes and uh, the doctor can change it any time he wants in fact uh, it's it's not just di uh, di problem and diagnosis we let's change that to anatomical structures for now just to show you that snomed ct can do much more okay under a snomed ct concept let's go to body structure okay we will constrain it instead uh problem and bp we will constrain this to body structure okay and i'm going to save that so now if you type 
it's showing only body structures. You can see fetal head, head. So now head is a different entire head. It's a body structure instead of a, a problem. But it doesn't make sense to make it that. Uh, now, anyway, this this tool is open source. I've I released it uh, on GitHub. Uh, you can just search for Medblocks UI and you will get it. Uh, but that's that's the future that uh, I would like to see. Like at least uh, learn Happy Fire, learn a little bit about uh, Open EHR, and uh, that's it. Java .NET, uh, is very common in the health space. And uh, if you want to get a job this should be enough but if you want to make a difference in the hospital if you want everyone to have a nice you know uh, uh, have a better experience creating interfaces to for the doctors to easily do things then i'll suggest you look at open hr so you look at open hr and start building your system based on that again like all the old stuff uh, you will need to provide legacy support uh, but slowly we need to move to a better future. So uh, I hope like it helped you a little bit. Yep. Thank you for this session, uh, Mr. Siddharth. And uh, if uh, any any more things required, I, I already shared your LinkedIn profile uh, link to them. Okay. They may be connecting with you. Uh, still, any any message if you want, you can pass on to pass it to me. I'll pass sure. it to them. Sure. Thank, sure. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Milan. Thank you, Pratyasha. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.